Ooh, very juicy, very juicy. So do they actually own the principal IP of some of the components in Meta Air anyways? Did they really own the principal IP of the AR and VR segment? Hmm, I guess you have to find out in the next part of this earning preview video. Mm. Hey, what is up, dudes and dudes? This is Dude Jordan here, and this is MMAT's August 10th, 2021 earnings preview, and presented by, well, number one himself, which is me, and number two is just traveling as usual. So, yeah, let's get into this real quick. So, the overview of this presentation, we're going to talk about the first thing is earning components, like what are the very conventional earning calls structure looks like and what do we expect from meta materials earning calls. I bet it's probably going to be super ordinary because no PR George and sweaty CFO with an IR that we're not really a fan of. Let's just see how that goes. The second one we're going to talk about is revenue potential and breakdowns. And the third one is partnerships and development. And fourth one, which is very important for me because I'm a very finance central guy and the financial statement sort of breaking down the finance or forward looking finance. And lastly, we're going to talk about DD's thoughts on what's going to happen after before the earning call and whether it's going to be good or bad. But from this presentation, you probably already know whether it's going to be good or bad. So first thing, earning components. Every earning call, there's going to be a safe harbor statement where people are going to talk about like the C-level executive or the IR guy or whoever hosting is like, oh my God, guys, here are some of the things you need to watch out for. Everything we say on this presentation is very forward looking. Therefore, uh, we, we're not legally liable for you know anything we said. So basically, they're just saying, oh, we might be over to positive for certain things. Okay. And we will have the regular George IR and Mr. Rice show where George come out and be like, oh, we're so good. Uh, at uh, everything, uh, you know, merger closes, everything goes fine. And I think they're going to just nail down on the part that they're not debt free and they have about $160 million in operating cash flow, basically free cash flow that they can use, whatever. But the fact that they're hiring more people really is burning the cash in a very exponentially growing rate, which I'm really concerned about. And I think uh, Mr. Rice here, who's the CFO, is going to address that a little bit or not. They might just avoid that. Um, so then the investors aren't concerned, but for a seasoned investor like me, I probably go look at their cash flow and everything. Uh, they're burning faster than expected and they're going to burn more considered they're hiring people in a rate where uh, also I don't really, uh, their hiring method is very interesting. I think they should be more focused on driven sales. R&D is important, but not as important at this stage because uh, later on, you will you will find out in the finance sector, which I'm going to talk about, what's their revenue drivers, and their rev revenue drivers are determined by three major things, and one of the major revenue drivers right now, as a huge component for their revenue, like the breakdown, is developmental cost or developmental revenue, and that thing is going to deteriorate over the next few years, and. Later on, you will figure out that sales is more important than they thought. So after that, there might be a Q&A faction where I don't think they're going to have that. If they do, maybe we should go ask some questions. Next one, we're going to break down the revenue component. OK, so if you just look at the revenue from previous financial statement from Meta Materials, not from Torch's revenue statement, by the way, and for those of you who are interested in contacting you know, Yahoo Finance or basically anybody else who posted revenue forecast or any revenue related component from Meta Material, all their data are wrong. All their data are based on, on torched revenue and it looks super, super bad. That's one of the reasons that nobody invests in this company. But there are also other reasons why a lot of people are trying to shine away, a shine away from investing in Meta, um, which I will sort of hint on either in this video or later in other videos. So as you can see, their product sales are increasing. Um, I will talk about what product sales they're doing, really. What are their main products? And uh, the second one is development for revenue. I'm going to hit on that in the next slide. And you see revenue and cost of goods sales are super, super low because a lot of their 
um, developmental revenue are driven from from R and D costs, but in this segment of the financial statement, you won't see how much they're actually spending in R and D. And if you actually scroll down a little bit on this document, you will see that their operating cost and their operating expenses in terms of general overhead, general expenses are super high. Um, I do think at this stage they're kind of overpaying their executives a little bit, and they're overpaying their their employees a little bit, maybe not their employees, but just the C-level executives. And the people they're finding are quote unquote seasoned CFOs and everyone. But in reality, I think they are a little bit outdated um, people. Cause you don't want a C-level sort of a C-suite where composed of all over 40 year old people. You will see some, some of them are like over 50. I mean, it's okay to have a very conservative CFO who's over 50 who you know, do a lot of risk assessment and do a lot of, you know, risk compliance stuff. That is really good for this company, especially, right? But um, the CFO serve as a controller of the company, but at the same time, you need some young blood to do the CMO part. Uh, the CTO part was pretty great because that's like George's dear friend who's been with him for a long time. But at the same time, you know, principal controller, CMO, PR, IR, all these people need to be a little bit new. Because uh, we understand the market way more than they do. Even though they're just sort of... Right now, they haven't think ahead, okay? If they think ahead, they'll realize that right now they're dealing with OEM. But later on, they're going to be dealing with more than OEMs. They're going to be dealing with more about the B2B side of the business. With the AR part. And, uh, and they think it's going to be a smooth butter transition. Or a smooth butter entry. But it's not. Um, glucose wise is the same thing. Um... The, uh, the, bio, the, the biotech component is way more complex than they thought, and the bio, uh, the bio sort of, the, the bio distribution, the, the bio component distribution requires a different set of CMO skills. And in order for them to finance more, more shares or finance more, more capital, they really need people like us who understand the people, the general people which do the PR work. Let's break down their revenue. So from this statement, we know that this company continued to generate revenue from a combination of engineering services and new product sales. So their revenue drivers for their product sales is basically hardware sales, right? Hardware sales like the, the AR goggles that they're developing right now, or right now they have one of the component, principal component of products is Meta Air, which they're sort of selling, but I'm not really sure if they're selling anymore because on the website, it used to be 2000 bucks and now it's like 999 which is a very clear um, sort of indicator that they're not selling that much directly from their website. And if you look at the shipping and everything, seems pretty immature. I've done a lot of side gigs for drop shipping, Amazon stuff for manufacturers and OEM. So I understand the business. I understand sort of the, the landscape. They're really neglecting that part of the sales. And also they signed an exclusive agreement with one of Airbus subsidies. These guys are their distributors, but when, once you're playing the vendor role for distributors, your margins are pretty thin. Grossing future revenue is dependent on developing and commercializing additional product, which is true, and they are too spread out in that part, which means in the next few years, we will see cash burn out pretty quick, which I'm really concerned. Further development of ongoing collaboration, strategic partnership, and other transition with third parties and mergers and acquisitions. There's not gonna be any mergers or acquisition really going on because they've already did a reverse merger, got them enough cash to last for at least about three to five years that hopefully it can reach on, um, you know, the stabilization of commercialization of roll to roll production of semiconductor, which I think is a big market, which is a big market that they should be focusing on. But right now they're focused on the AR or the meta air component, which a lot of you are mentioning in comments or you're mentioning in other tubers videos you know, Convestro, but Convestro is actually their supplier. So they don't really make money per se right now. What they did, I, will, I think I will post another slide after this slide about what's their relationship with their, with their supplier, which is Convestro and the entire sort of supply chain all the way from manufacturer, supplier to manufacturer, which is meta materials all the way to the end, which is the end consumer and what their margins are looking like and the entire sort of supply chain business value chain provided in this product. And you will see that the margin is pretty thin and I don't think the, mar the market is big enough. 
Management estimated that the company's working capital is sufficient to fund its operation into second quarter of 2022. They're a little bit too positive for this one, which, well, I mean, they're, they're not really like too positive. It is true. The statement is true. But the problem is they're not really looking into funding into op, like 2022 second quarter. What they're really looking forward to funding to is they're looking for the third quarter of 2024. And uh, that might be a problem because the the HR is hiring more people, and I don't know if they're hiring the right people. There is no uh, there is no certainty that the company will ultimately achieve profitable operation, become cash flow positive, or raise additional debt or equity capital. This is in every dose of this statement. They're telling you, oh, we might be over to positive. As I mentioned before, revenue drivers are product sales, which is equals to their hardware sales, engineering contracts. Um, they basically they. You know, they send out the engineers and do development stuff for other people. And you have existing developmental contract maturity, which is, you know, um, the supplier agreement was Convestro, which is actually not hard on cash. It's just an agreement that they actually put up collateral to secure a supply, uh, a supply deal with Convestro. So Convestro is actually the ultimate winner in this uh, contract anyways. Uh, maturity, including stuff like, um, the Lockheed Martin contract, the contract with Airbus and everything. But once it reached 2022, a lot of these contract maturity dates are already there. By the end of 2023, all of the contracts are already matured. That means by 2023, if they cannot post or cannot give us any um, positive news on their product development and on their sales cycle or on their potential sales potential, it's really it's a major red flag and it's really ne- it's gonna be very 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 negative um pr or negative press for them so what is really important is the q4 2021 um about the third or q4 2022 and leading into q1 2024 or 2023 i'm sorry so yeah 2023 is a big year mark that year because if they don't figure out any other more de- developmental product to do or you know, get more PR or get people to actually sell their products. By 2023, the majority chunk of their revenue is going to be zero. And here is a detailed breakdown of their def- deferred revenue section or what we can also call development revenue breakdown because all of these revenue are deferred. That means they receive the payment or they semi receive the payment, but the revenue recognition process haven't triggered yet. Especially the fact that um, Meta is actually transferring from IFRS accounting method to GAAP method, you will see some major changes in the way how they present their balance sheet, income statement, a lot of disclosures and notes are going to be different. And I would suspect that their revenue will actually go down uh, due to GAAP standards. And the fact that their principal accounting com- controller is actually not specialized in GAAP, they're specialized in ISFR, ISR, IFRS, which make it kind of difficult um, in this transition. And I'm not super positive regarding the revenue breakdown section of the earnings, if they are actually going to talk in depth about it, but I doubt it. Because I think George want to really focus on the tech, but the fact that that he's not really a fantastic presenter in terms of to the general public. So let's just see what's gonna happen. Hey guys, I think this is it for this video. I do not wanna exceed the 15 minutes mark. It seems like a lot of you guys don't like any videos over 13 minutes or 15 minutes. So this is it for part one and there's gonna be part two, part three and part four of this video, which talks about the development and their partnerships which is going to be the majority part of the potential catalyst sort of section in the series. So if those of you who just want to hear about bullish news, then that one probably going to be the video that you want to be looking at. And uh, the finance part is the video after that one. And the fifth part of this video series of earnings preview is going to be Didi's thoughts on what he thinks, which is what I think, that's going to happen really on the preview day with all of the, uh, the, the, the data and stuff that presented in this presentation. Then you guys are going to be like, oh, we're just going to need to go watch the, the fifth part. No, because I also intertwine a lot of my opinions within the each individual part of the series. 
So I suggest you guys to watch every single video to their entirety. And thank you so much for listening so far. And if you haven't smashed that like button, go do that so we can beat the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subbed, you know that you will get 10 years of good luck if you sub to our channel, right? And yeah, see you guys on the upside and in the next video.